in the last presentation we had seen the discussion regarding concepts of influence line diagrams the application of uh, influence line diagrams to simple problem and then we had started with analysis of simply support beams carrying single concentrated wheel load using ILD. In today's class we shall discuss the analysis of simply supported beams carrying moving uniformly distributed load longer than span using influence line diagram and analysis of simply supported beams carrying moving uniformly distributed load shorter than span using influence line diagrams. As you can recollect we will be analyzing the simply supported beam using four types of influence line diagrams that is the first one is reaction for left support then the reaction for right support you have got two influence line diagrams we also have influence line diagrams for bending moment at a given section in the beam and also the influence line diagram for shear force at a given section in the beam. So using these four influence line diagrams it is possible to analyze the problem for any particular case. So let us start the discussion with respect to the first type of load in today's presentation that is moving UDL longer than the span. So a typical problem is a moving UDL of magnitude 16 kilometer per meter longer than the span crosses a simply supported beam of 12 meters. Please understand the length of the UDL is longer than 12 meters. Okay, it could be any any length longer than that. It could be 13 meters, it could be 100 meters. Anyway, it is more than 12 meters. Find one reactions at the supports that is both left and right when the front end of the UDL is at 4 meters from left support. So, we will assume that the UDL is moving crossing the beam from left end to right end. So, in that context okay, when the front end of the UDL is at a certain position we are trying to find the reactions at both A and B. Then we are also trying to calculate bending moment and shear force at 4 meters from right support a section the section is defined when the rear end of the UDL that is the tail of the UDL is at some location is at 3 meters from left support. So that means we are trying to calculate both bending moment and shear force at a given section that is at 4 meters from right support for a particular position of load that is when the tail of the UDL is at 3 meters from left support then maximum bending moment and maximum shear force at 4 meters from right support. So that is for some position of load we had calculated okay, the bending moment and shear force at that given section. Now in number 3 we are trying to calculate for what position of load we can get maximum BM and maximum shear force at that location. And the fourth one is absolute maximum BM in the beam, bending moment in the beam. That is when the load crosses the beam. Okay, which cross section will get experience maximum bending moment of all the cross sections 
and for that to happen how should you place the load and the last one is similar to that absolute maximum shear force in the beam that means which section will experience the maximum shear force okay when the udl moves from left end to right end or crosses the beam okay and what is the value how to place the load okay and we are trying to do this using influence line diagrams please understand okay these problems are quite simple okay and we are trying to use this using influence line diagram and we are not trying to do these problems in the conventional sense where we use the equilibrium equations now the first objective here is to find the reaction at support a when the load is positioned as defined okay the first thing that we are trying to talk about here is okay we are trying to calculate the reaction at support a the first thing that we have to do is we have to quickly draw the appropriate influence line diagram and then think about placing the load on the beam okay so the ild is always drawn for a particular quantity that is it could be reaction it could be bending moment or it could be shear force so what we want is reaction support reaction at a so a typical ild looks like this it is a right angle triangle it has maximum ordinate of 1 okay at support a and the variation okay from this ordinate to the other ordinate at b which is zero is always linear so first quickly draw the influence line diagram okay so the length of this ild is obviously the length of the beam that is 12 meters that has to be written now having written the appropriate influence line now we let us try to place the load he says that the front end of the load is at 4 meters from left support it could be 4 meters it could be 5 meters it could be anywhere okay for some position of load we are trying to find the reaction at a so here it is specified that the front end is at 4 meters okay from left support so c defines the front end of load now the next thing that we are trying to do is we need to calculate the ordinates at the two ends of the udl okay in the ild so that is on the beam obviously so please understand this indicates this line indicates okay the length of the udl is infinite okay or it could be more than 12 meters it just goes on i have just written a section here i have cut okay but please understand the udl extends beyond this portion okay that you are trying to see over here okay now i need to calculate the ordinates in ild okay in this beam portion at c i need to calculate the ordinate in ild i can easily do this by a similar triangle that means for a length of 12 meters the ordinate is 1 meters for a length of 8 meters what is the value it is 8 by 12 into 1 that is 0.667 please understand the ordinate at a is already calculated it's already defined that is 1 so right now the udl this longer than the span is acting only in portion ac of the beam because temporarily okay this is the position at which the udl is positioned now immediately we need to find the area okay under the udl in ild so the hatched portion whatever you are trying to see indicates the area that we are trying to take and multiply with the intensity of load to get the reaction at a so how do we calculate the reaction at a it is simple intensity of udl which is 16 multiplied by area in ild under udl which is it area of a trapezium okay so you can easily cal understand that 16 multiplied by how to get the area of the trapezium average of the two ordinates 1 plus 0.667 divided by 2 that is 0.5 into 1 plus 0.667 into distance between the two ordinates which is 4 if you simplify okay you get the value as okay 53. Point, okay 
kN kilonewtons. Okay, so please understand that this is the reaction at A. Okay, when the UDL of 16 kilonewton per meter is placed on the beam. So if we just try to quickly recollect, okay, just by equilibrium condition. So 16 into 4, that is 64 kilonewton load is now placed at placed on the beam of which reaction at support A is 53.34 you can easily guess that the reaction at B would be 10.66 here please remember ok but however we are trying to calculate the reaction at B ok using the influence line diagram now let us try to repeat these steps for support B the very first thing that we would be doing here is okay we will plot the influence line diagram for reaction BB just like BA this also is a right angle triangle okay it has a unit ordinate or ordinate of 1 at support B and 0 ordinate at support A the variation is linear straight line okay so this is how the influence line diagram varies okay right from okay 1 at B to 0 at A so since we are trying to calculate the reaction at support B we first draw the appropriate influence line diagram now we place the load on the beam okay as indicated that is we have said that the UDL okay front end of the UDL is at 4 meters from support A so we now try to position the load appropriately so here I have cut the length of the UDL beyond this but however what matters is what load is acting on the beam so only the length of the UDL from A to C is acting on the beam so UDL beyond this point does not come into the calculations ok the very first thing I have to do now is get the ordinates ok at A and get the ordinate at C the ordinate at A is 0 already defined now we need to calculate the ordinate at C in the influence line diagram and you can easily calculate that from similar triangles that is the total span is 12 meters so at 12 meters the ordinate is 1 at 4 meters what is the ordinate so it is 4 by 12 it is 0 0.333 now having got the ordinate at uh, C the next thing is we need to calculate the area in influence line diagram under the load which is nothing but this hatched portion now once you understand this I hope you can easily guess that the reaction at B can be easily determined by taking the product of the intensity multiplied by the area in ILD under UDL as you know the intensity is 16 ok we need to calculate the area of the hatched portion it is just a triangle so we just try to take half base height that is 0 0.5 is half base is 4 meters height is 0 0.333 it comes to 10.66 kilonewton so if you quickly recollect we had said that ok since the reaction at A for this position of load ok is 53.34 kilonewtons ok the reaction at B should be 10.66 kilonewton because the total load is 16 into 4 64 kilonewton and that is what we have got here ok I hope you can easily understand ok so whatever answer that we have got is correct but we have not used any conventional method to calculate the reactions we have calculated we have used the influence line diagram appropriate influence line diagram to calculate the reaction at A as well as reaction at B now let us go to the next objective the next objective would be ok to find the bending moment at C ok when the load is positioned in a defined way but we will just try to hold the position of the load ok for the time being ok because influence line diagram is always drawn for a particular quantity like bending moment ok at a given section so 
the section is defined here c is the section which has been defined so as you can understand a b is the span a b is the beam of span 12 meters okay now the position c is defined with respect to b that is it is said that c is at a distance of 4 meters from b right since the total length of the beam is 12 meters so 12 minus 4 is 8 meters so distance ac is 8 meters which is uh, abbreviated as small a and distance cb is 4 meters which is abbreviated as small b okay having given the section and we are trying to calculate the bending moment at section c we quickly draw the corresponding influence line diagram the influence line diagram for a beam simply support beam for bending moment at c is a triangle you can clearly see we have drawn a triangle you just put a baseline at c write an ordinate okay at c we have to write an ordinate how do we calculate the ordinate it is calculated as a into b by l what is a okay it is distance ac what is small b distance cb so 8 into 4 okay that would be 32 divided by l l is nothing but 12 meters okay so 32 by 12 okay will give you 2.667 and the ordinate that we have at c is 2.667 so you can quickly draw this ild okay to begin with now once you have drawn the ild now we just consider the load and try to place it appropriately now the next thing that has been said about the load is the rear end of the udl is at 3 meters from left support okay please understand okay the udl keeps on moving at some instant however longer however length it could be right so finally the tail passes the beam so now we are trying to say there is a situation where the end of the udl is at 3 meters from a and we have defined this end as point d okay this is at some instant this is the position of the load okay now having said this we need to find first the ordinates at important points in ild what are the important points the first one is the end of the udl d so just come down and try to get the ordinate okay in ild corresponding to point d so this can be easily obtained using similar triangles that means okay for a distance ac that is 3 plus 5 8 meters at 8 meters it is 2.667 at 3 meters what is the value so that would be 3 by 8 into 2.667 will give you this value of 1 so we've calculated the ordinate at d you already had calculated the ordinate at c and at b the ordinate is 0 so please understand the udl is spread okay from d to c as well as c to b so the next thing that we need to realize here is we have to just consider the appropriate area in ild under udl which would be this hatched area so this is the area that we have to consider because okay udl is present from d to b i need to consider the area in ild right from this end to this point okay so once we have understood this okay we can easily calculate the bending moment at c for this position of load and the equation is very same okay so bending moment at c is nothing but intensity of udl multiplied by area in influence line diagram under udl okay so when you just talk about area okay this is the hatched area that we have to consider this we can split into two parts okay the first one okay being a trapezium and the second one is a triangle so we can calculate this total area as area of a trapezium plus area of triangle so let's try to see this so 16 into i'm just talking about area of trapezium to begin with it is the average of the two ordinates okay on either side of the trapezium which is one and 2.667 so we have set as 0.5 into 1 plus 2.667 multiplied by distance between the two ordinates is 5 plus we need to calculate area of this triangle 
which is nothing but half base height half is 0.5 okay as you can clearly see here okay and then 4 okay it's nothing but this distance base and height is 2.667 correct so you can easily calculate the value of moment here so moment at c for this position of load is something like 232 kilonewton meter okay so if the position of the load changes obviously the bending moment at c keeps on changing but for whatever position of UDL we can always calculate the bending moment by using this concept so the influence line diagram does not change what can change is the position of load so whatever may be the defined position of the load place the load appropriately and try to calculate the area in ILD under the load under UDL then multiply okay intensity of load multiplied by the corresponding area and that should give you the bending moment at C so ILD is drawn always for a section here we have drawn for that defined section okay now I want you to remember this this value of bending moment because we would be again calculating the absolute maximum BM so this should always be less than the absolute maximum BM which is the maximum for a given problem okay so this is this is next objective is uh, what that we have uh, achieved to find the bending moment at a given section C for a given position of load we will repeat this for shear force so again we have to calculate shear force at the same section c for a defined position of load so first don't worry about the load try to first just draw the influence line diagram appropriate ild for the given section now since we are calculating shear force we will draw the appropriate influence line diagram that is ild for shear force section c is defined c is at 4 meters from b so this is where section c is defined now once this is 4 meters the distance ac should be 8 meters because the total length of the beam is 12 meters now a typical ild for sf looks like this so two triangles okay right angle triangles one below the baseline one above the baseline you got uh, the common ordinate for both the triangles at C and this ordinate okay the ordinate below the baseline is calculated as A by L what is small a it is distance from A to C this is small a so that is 8 divided by L is 12 so 8 by 12 is 0 0.667 and the ordinate of this triangle above the baseline is B by L so what is B distance from C to B that is 4 by 12 that is 0 0.33 please understand okay the ordinate below the baseline is b by l the ordinate above the baseline is a by l okay sorry the b a by l is below the baseline and b by l is above the baseline when you add the two okay a by l plus b by l numerator is a plus b divided by l that is l by l that is one so you can always understand that if you add the two ordinates it should be always equal to one the ordinate below the baseline is a by l ordinate above is b by l and important is the sign okay all the ordinates in portion ac are negative and all the ordinates in portion cb are positive so very first thing that we have to do is draw the ild for the uh, 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 desired quantity that is shear force okay for the specified section now having drawn the influence line diagram okay the next part is to place the load okay now we have put the load on the B so as mentioned earlier so we are trying to say that the rear end of the UDL is at a D that is at 3 meters from left support ok we are calculating bending moment and shear force at the same section for the same position of load in this problem correct so if you just try to look at this D is defined 3 meters from A so total distance AC is 8 meters so obviously DC will be 5 meters ok so now place the load ok as defined now we have to calculate ordinates at important points ok in ILD so one would be at a D so we need to calculate this ordinate how do we calculate this by a similar triangle so that means for distance AC that is 8 meters the ordinate here is 0 0.667 ordinate below the baseline so for distance 3 meters 
what will be the ordinate? So you can easily calculate as 3 divided by 8 into 0 0.667 which comes to 0 0.25. Okay, so we have calculated the ordinate at D. The next one is we want to calculate the ordinate at C also which is already calculated or defined. We also want the ordinate at B which is 0. So we have calculated or we know the ordinates at very important locations. The next one is we need to find the area in ILD okay, below the UDL. So we would be trying to calculate the area okay, of the trapezium okay, in portion DC and we will be trying to calculate the area of the triangle okay, in ILD in portion CB. But one thing that you need to be careful here is the area in portion DC will be negative because the ordinates are minus negative and the area in portion CB is positive because all the ordinates here are positive. So having understood this we can easily calculate okay, what is the shear force at C. Now how do we calculate the shear force at C? It is quite simple. We use same expression intensity of UDL multiplied by area in ILD under UDL. This area is split into two parts one trapezium one triangle but trapezium area is negative and triangular area is positive you have to use the appropriate signs. So let us start with area of the trapezium so 16 into I have started with minus sign here minus ok then how do we calculate the area of the trapezium average of the two ordinates that is 0.5 times 0 0.25 plus 0 0.667 multiplied by distance between the two ordinates which is 5 meters into 5. So this one will give you the area of the trapezium we put a minus sign here. Next we say plus because this is plus area positive area its area of triangle half base height 0 0.5 into 4 ok into 0 0.33 ok. So once you simplify this you get the shear force at C which is minus 26.02 kilonewtons. Please understand that. Okay, so what we have got is the shear force at C for this position of load. However, if the position of load changes, obviously the corresponding area will also change and you will get a different magnitude of shear force at the same section. So, influence line diagram will help you to calculate this ILD will help you to calculate the shear force at this section, defined section C which is at 4 meters from B okay for any position of load you can try to calculate. However, if you want to calculate the shear force at some other defined section the values of small a and small b will change okay so because once you move this support C okay to the left okay distance AC will reduce and distance CB will increase and again in the your ILD A by L and B by L will change and uh, you can repeat this a procedure even for that position of section and for a defined uh, uh, position of load ok. It is a very simple exercise once you understand uh, this you can always try to extend this to any section and any position of load. I again wanted to remember this uh, a value of shear force 26 kiloton. This sign will indicate ok that is uh, the shear force whether it is acting up or down positive left and down things like that ok. So in shear force we are more interested with respect to the magnitude and also direction is there ok which that sign will try to tell you ok but 26.02 I want you to remember the magnitude. Now we move on to the uh, next uh, type of uh, uh, objective that is a maximum bending moment at section C. Please understand ok I am still maintaining the same section ok. So section C is again the same thing that is 4 meters from B. So again I just try to take section C at 4 meters from B. So obviously AC would be 8 meters because the total span is 12 meters. Since uh, I have defined the section and I am trying to calculate bending moment I quickly draw the ILD for BM which is absolutely the same as we had drawn for the previous case ok. Now the difference between the previous case and this case is ok in the previous case we had also defined the position of the load but here we are not trying to define the position of the load ok it is just for us, for us to understand 
how to place this UDL okay on the beam so that I get maximum bending moment at C if we imagine okay that is as the front end of the UDL keeps moving on the beam it will be occupying different positions at various instants for each of these positions okay the bending moment at C keeps on changing but what we are trying to say here is for what position okay of the UDL we will get maximum bending moment at C okay is what we are trying to uh, understand so anyway first plot the influence line diagram I hope it is very simple okay for uh, ILD for beam at C the maximum ordinate is at C and we calculate as A into B by L A small a is distance AC and small b is distance CB L is a span you get this number okay now the logic here is if you recollect the expression that we make use of to calculate bending moment here so we try to say to get maximum bending moment okay right we have to place the UDL over the entire span basically because if you recollect the expression we try to use it is intensity of load multiplied by area in ILD under the load so the only variable is area as area keeps on increasing okay the bending moment keeps on increasing area is nothing but area in ILD okay to get maximum area in ILD you have to take the entire area of ILD for you to take the entire area of ILD it is obvious that the UDL should be present okay right from A to B so what we are trying to suggest here is to get maximum bending moment at C okay place the load such that the UDL is spread over the entire span AC please understand okay there is also UDL okay to the right of B and also there is UDL to the left of B basically because the UDL we have considered is of length more than 12 meters right so you can understand that we can easily spread the UDL over the entire length of the beam okay and for this position of load we repeat okay calculating the bending moment at C and whatever value you get should be the maximum bending moment okay that would be developed at C okay so to get max beam place the UDL over the entire span so that the area of the entire ILD can be considered so that means I am just and now I hatch the entire area of the triangle that is representing the ILD for BM at C because the UDL is spread right from A to B. Now once you have understood this we do the calculation that is max BM at C equal to intensity of UDL multiplied by area in ILD under UDL. Intensity of UDL is 16 area of ILD would be area of the entire triangle that would be half base height half is 0.5 okay base is entire length span 12 meters into height of the ordinate 2.667 you multiply you got a value of 256.03 knm now we just try to compare this value with the previous one you had got that is 232 that means for some defined position you had calculated what is the bending moment at C okay now please understand okay the maximum that is as the load keeps on changing the bending moment keeps on changing at C but understand the maximum bending moment that section C can develop is 256.03 kilometer meter okay at that section this is the maximum BM we can expect now coming to the same type of uh, uh, discussion okay this would be for shear force okay so what is the maximum shear force okay that we can have okay at C is what we are talking about okay so uh, uh, we have in this particular case again we are not trying to tell you where the load is positioned it is up to understand okay and, and, and try to place the load appropriately so that you get maximum shear force at C for the given load what is the load that we have got the load is more than length of the load is UDL is more than 12 meters okay the very first thing that we right now do is okay we have defined section C section C is at 4 meters from B the same section so once you define section C the distance from A to C is 8 meters because it is L minus small b that is small a is 8 meters and BC is small b that is 4 meters so once section C is given AC and CB are known which are nothing but small a and small b 
Now quickly we draw the appropriate influence line diagram that is ILD for shear force at C which comes comprise of two right angle triangles one right angle triangle below the base one above the base line ok and you got common ordinates ok at section C and the ordinate below the line is nothing but small a by capital L which is nothing but 8 by 12 0 0.667 and the ordinate above the baseline ok is small b by L that is 4 by 12 0 0.33 as I have been telling you the sum of these ordinates should always is always equal to 1 and important thing that you need to understand here is ok this portion is negative and this portion is positive is it alright ok now having uh, uh, been written the influence line diagram the next thing is we need to think as to how we need to place the load ok on the beam so that we get maximum shear force at C now if you just try to uh, use the same uh, method that we had adopted for the previous case that means where the UDL is spread right from A to B entire span and come down please understand ILD comprises of two different portions a negative portion right from A to C and a positive portion from C to B and if you place the load right from A to B ok the, the positive area to some extent will reduce the negative area and the net shear force will be small so it is quite uh, logical ok to understand that when we place the load we try to tell that either place the UDL in such a way that it is covering the entire negative portion or it is covering the entire positive portion whichever is larger now since section C is at 4 meters from B so obviously it is 8 meters from A and hence you can easily understand that the negative portion in this case is larger than the positive portion so it is quite logical to place the UDL in portion AC so that I get maximum area of one of the triangles ok so one of the triangles will have maximum area unless C is right at the mid midpoint when C is right at uh, mid, mid span both negative and positive area will be same so you can use any of the two areas in that situation but in this particular context ok so AC ok is more than AB ok since AC is more than AB ok so we can understand that for the given section we try to place the UDL ok in or the larger portion that is AC so you can clearly see this is how I have placed the UDL so that means my front end the front end of the UDL ok is made to uh, coincide with section C ok so once I place the UDL in such a way ok the next task would be to calculate the appropriate area in ILD in flux line diagram so what is the appropriate area I would be now trying to consider it is nothing but the entire negative portion so that means ok so this is the portion ok that I have been considering please understand if the UDL is made to move beyond this particular point ok so there would be again some area that I need to consider even in the positive portion so when I am trying to take the total area so some amount of uh, the negative area will be compensated by the positive area and the shear force will reduce so the objective of this exercise is to find what is the maximum shear force that would be developed at C now we will have to ignore the sign in the sense that the sign will tell you the direction of the shear force like up or down but we are more interested in the magnitude of the shear force hence you do not need not worry about the sign so just try to just check whether AC is more or CB is more and accordingly place the UDL for example in this uh, if I if I had asked uh, a different question in the sense that ok if C were to be 4 meters from A then obviously ok uh, CB would have been larger than AC in which case I would have so positioned the load such that the tail of the UDL the rear end of the UDL would have coincided with C and then the remaining load ok would be to the right of the uh, section C so that means so that the entire positive diagram would have been loaded so now having loaded the beam appropriately so we try to use the same equation 
that is to find the maximum shear force at C, you multiply the intensity of UDL, again that is 16, by this area, now you have to take that minus, just to say the direction, minus 0.5 into base is 8 meters, okay, the ordinate is 0 0.667, multiply, you get maximum shear force at C, which is 42.69 kilonewtons. Correct. So again, if you just try to uh, quickly recollect, okay, so this is definitely larger than the one that we did calculate, okay, earlier at the same section for some position of load, okay. So we can expect that at section C, this is the maximum shear force we can develop, okay, that the, that the that section will develop when the load just crosses over the beam. Now we will go to the uh, next uh, two major objectives, okay, which is normally considered in the design. Okay, whenever we do a, a design of a beam, that is design is nothing but uh, trying to get a maximum internal force, that is nothing but the bending moment or the shear force that will develop in the beam so that I can uh, arrive at the dimensions of the beam appropriately. Okay, so this is more important for our design, design of beams. Okay, absolute maximum bending moment. So what do you mean by absolute maximum bending moment? So absolute maximum bending moment is nothing but the maximum bending moment we can expect in the beam to develop okay, at, at some section. So in the previous objective we just defined some section C, something like 4 meters from uh, right support. Okay, you can go on defining different sections okay, over the entire length of the beam and for each section you can place the load appropriately and understand what is the maximum bending moment okay, we can get. So, absolute maximum bending moment would be the maximum of all these maximums, right? So you need to understand the simple uh, logic here. When the UDL is longer than the span, absolute maximum bending moment always occurs at the mid span. So now section C is what we are now trying to uh, uh, arrive at, okay? This is not given. We are trying to tell, okay, where it occurs. So where does absolute maximum bending moment occur for this particular load? For UDL, longer than span, Okay, section C is at mid span. The next part is, okay, for that to happen, for maximum bending moment to develop at mid span, how should you place the load? So obviously common sense, okay, the entire area should be covered when you are doing bending moment. So you just try to place the UDL over the entire span. So these two things we need to remember, okay. So let us now first talk about the section. So we have defined section C. So section C is not given, we are now trying to uh, 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 tell where it happens and appropriately we have written the section C. So section C is marked at the mid span. So total length is 12 meters. So this is 6 meters, that is 6 meters. Okay, so both small a and small b are 6 meters. Now we want to calculate the ordinate. Okay, we are drawing ILD for BM. It looks like a triangle, always. Okay, where is the maximum ordinate? At C. How do you get this ordinate? A, B by L. Okay, so when A and B are equal to L by 2, this expression simplifies to L by 4 or 12 by 4 is 3. So the ordinate here is 3. Okay, so this is the first thing that we need to understand. First draw ILD for BM at C. Now place the load. How should we place the load so that I get, I need to get maximum area. What is the type of load I have got? UDL longer than the span, more than 12 meters. So it is now possible for me to place the load over the entire span. Okay. So once you place the load over the entire span, obviously I will be trying to use the entire area okay, in my uh, influence line diagram. So that means, okay, if you just try to check, I will be trying to place, I will be trying to consider this entire area okay, right, for my calculation. So that means, I okay, will be now trying to multiply the two quantities, that is intensity of UDL okay, multiplied by the area okay under the UDL. So what is the intensity? 16. What is it? How do I calculate the area? It's the area of a triangle. How do I calculate the area of the triangle? Half base height. So 0.5 is half multiplied by base is 12 meters. The height of the ordinate is 3. So I simplify I get as 288 kilonewton meter. So again I wanted you to uh, I wanted to compare this with the previous bending moment we have got. So earlier we have calculated two bending moments, okay. So section C was defined like 4 meters from B, okay. Having defined that section, that particular section, we had placed the load in some way, that means 3 meters from A. 
and we had worked out the bedding limit. If I am correct, it, we had got something like 232 uh, kilonewton meter. Uh, the next one was uh, for the same section, we said what could be the maximum bending moment that that section develops. So we did place the UDL over the entire length, our entire span and then we had computed the value of something like 252 kilonewton meter. Okay, now please understand, if you just try to check this, this is 288. So this is the maximum bending moment that we can expect to develop in the beam. Okay, so that means it does uh, no other section other than mid span. Okay, we can experience this bending moment, which is the maximum, that is 288 kilonewton meter. Okay, and for that to happen, you have to place the UDL or the entire length of the beam. So this is a very simple concept, is what you need to understand. But how, when we take the next kind of examples, like it could be UDL smaller than span, or at least two concentrated load or multiple wheel loads. Okay, you have to be more okay uh, uh, logical, or we need to just have some conditions. Okay, and then place the load appropriately and then we need to calculate. But anyway, I hope uh, this is simple and you have understood this one, this particular case. So we will now extend the same uh, thing to absolute maximum shear force in the beam. Correct? So it is the same logic as what we are trying to tell you. When you say absolute maximum shear force, okay, so in the previous two cases we had defined some section C, right, which is 4 meters from support A we had placed uh, uh, to begin with in case one we had given the position of load we had calculated the shear force at that section and then uh, we wanted to find what is the maximum shear force that will develop at C for which we had placed it over AC and we had got some number okay but now what we are talking about is okay design a situation we would like to know which section will develop the maximum of all maximum shear force which is defined as absolute maximum shear force so again, for this particular case, UDL longer than span, it is a very simple thing. It always occurs at the supports. With support, both supports simultaneously. Please understand, okay? Both supports will experience max shear force simultaneously, okay? When you place the UDL for the entire span. So that means because UDL is longer than the span, you just make it to occupy the entire span. Is it all right? And then the the, the reactions whatever we get is the maximum shear force that we can expect to develop in the beam which will be max more than any of the sections okay uh, that, that that will be there uh, between a and c for any position of load so it's a very simple exercise that we are trying to talk about here so the first one is it occurs at the supports which support both support simultaneously we are trying to take one of the supports and then place the load over the entire uh, span and then do the calculation right Okay, so we are now trying to take support A. You can also take support B when you are trying to talk about absolute maximum shear force. You draw the appropriate ILD right now. It is nothing but a triangle which has a unit ordinate at A. Okay, so it has uh, the, the length of this is 12 meter. I am sorry, it is not 8 meters. Okay, if I am correct, it is 12 meters what the problem is. Okay, 12 meters. Okay, now uh, uh, having drawn the uh, appropriate ILD, the next thing is you need to understand we have to place the UDL such that I get maximum area okay in ILD okay now how do I do that I just try to put the UDL over the entire span so once I place it over the entire span okay I'll be trying to take the entire area correct so once I get the entire area is it alright I can easily try to multiply the two that is to get absolute maximum shear force at A it's nothing but intensity of UDL, okay, multiplied by ordinate in ILD under UDL. So intensity is uh, 16, so 12, okay, the span is right here, that is 12 meters. So 16 into area of the triangle, this right angle triangle, half base height, okay, 0 0.5 into 2 into 1, okay, simplify, you get 96 kilometer. Okay, so please understand, what is the total load? 16 into 12, okay, so we just try to multiply 16 into 12 okay I guess you should get it as 192 kilonewtons so half of that is 96 so half of it comes here the half of the other one goes there so both uh, reactions uh, A at A and B will be maximum and this is the absolute maximum shear force so we get for this particular problem so I hope you have understood uh, the different uh, objectives that we can uh, try to calculate or achieve okay in this type of example that is uh, UDL, moving UDL longer than the span.
okay so we will uh, 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 the next uh, task would be to analyze a simply support beam carrying moving udl shorter than the span again and we are trying to use the influence line diagram to do this problem okay so we will try to uh, take up this particular uh, problem in the next class